Hello and welcome to another video from the Trade Lands Nation. This is our monthly world report. As we always do, we start today with a look at the economy. As of the closing bell on September 30th, the MNG index closes at 23,734, up 4%. This change is due to attempts by miners to raise the selling price of Onyx to around 5,000 per piece. As a result, analysts project that this will be a temporary blip. The buy price for Onyx remains at 3,000 per piece, which is actually down 400 points, meaning players actually value it less than they did three months ago. So this new price point is unlikely to stay. The JSI index also saw gains, closing at 18,208, a gain of 153 points. The decline at the end of the month is due to exclusive woods being reintroduced to the market. This causes a phenomenon known as market saturation where players instead use premium tokens to buy wood from the vendor instead of through timber felling. Depending on what items are released in October, their impact on the wood market and the wood market's demand will determine if this index rises or falls accordingly. Finally, the earnings index closes at 47,939, a loss of 514 points, down 1%. Opposite to what we saw in the JSI index, the earnings index saw a sharp increase due to the inflation of premium tokens and their value as players rush to purchase items from the vendor before they go off sale. However, a market strength report shows the earnings index remains consistently bearish despite this trend. This downward momentum is expected to continue since we are on the cusp of the Halloween release which usually comes in October. And that leads us into our market spotlight for today, and that is what do predictable releases in Tradelands do to the Tradelands market? A predictable release is one that usually happens every year at around the same time and is therefore anticipated by players. In Tradelands, the biggest impact every year is during an event that we call the Summer Break Release, which is usually in May or sometimes June. Second and third are the Winter Release and the Halloween Release respectively. The top five are rounded out with the April Fool's release and the Valentine's Day release, but today, the Halloween release, which is coming later this month, is the focus of this spotlight. We released a module about six months back that started tracking item prices based on their unique prefixes. And whether you agree with the prices or not, as players have been entering more data into the system, the model has reached a point where it can actually locate and predict trends in the prefix pricing market. This chart shows a glimpse of how prices change before and after one of these predictable releases. In short, they follow the overall trend of the earnings index. For example, if you are selling a sort that is valued at 30,000 doubloons and the market's overall strength rises by 1%, then the sword would now have an average value of 30,300 doubloons respectively. The prefix breakdown shows that the glowy market as a whole tends to stay in line with this overall market trend. But where it gets interesting is when you isolate only combat effect prefixes. When you look at just these items, we see a different trend. Combat effect weapons see a steep discount in their prices just prior to a release. And it's not a nominal price drop. We're talking to the tune of 15% to 25% below their market price. While we don't know for sure what causes this, there are two likely reasons. First, if crates are expected to release, players are attempting to clear out their existing inventory in order to bring in new items. That or they are expecting that anything that can be sold can then be replaced with something from one of the crates once they drop. The second reason, and the one that we believe may be the actual case, is that players are attempting to gather up as many premium tokens and doubloons as possible so they have more disposable wealth to make purchases of items that are released during the event. And the reason why we see these discounts on combat effect weapons only is because they are marketing these to wealthy players, who have the disposable income to actually buy them and will also recognize the value of the discount because they know what the combat effects weapons price should be. The reason we call this out now is because even casual players can purchase these items if you have the right amount of doubloons or premium tokens to buy them. So it can be the best time to buy a combat effect weapon if that is your ultimate goal. And since we are saying this in relation to the upcoming Halloween event, I'll also point out that we see the same thing for other Halloween items as well. 
the three to watch are Ghost Morphs, Ghost Ship Vouchers, and Skeletone. Players tend to inflate or deflate these items based on if they think they will be re-released this year. For the record, Ghost Morphs were not in last year's event, but Ghost Ship Vouchers were, and Skeletone was actually released through Spooky on Mallorca last year. So keep that in mind when you're pricing these items. And with the economics out of the way, we move into the state of world affairs. This was a month of peace as the nations of the Grand Isles made their way north to the fifth annual Birkeland Royal Games. Today we are going to show the highlights of these games. It is our intention to eventually release all of our footage of the games, so if you want to avoid spoilers, then I'd stop watching here. This video is not for you. On day one, we saw the completion of the Couples Clash, the Mortar Competition, and Short Swords East Bracket. In the Couples Clash, Blackwind's Team Spider Villain would win a clean sweep with Nova's Team Chancellor in a close second. Then in the Mortar Competition, Whitecrest Mortar Team 2 pulled off a miracle performance, CBJ and Real Homie Synth, setting records as they scored two hits on the bonus target one of which was also a combo hit to take the gold with 1,612 points, with no team coming even close to touching them. In the Short Swords East bracket, the competition came down to just two undefeated challengers. Give Electro Steel going up against Eating. But in the end, it was Eating's amazing side dash technique that would win the day, meaning all three factions would end day one with one gold medal each. Continuing into day two, Nova's domination of the land battles would continue, with Green Trademark pulling off a shutout performance. His wins were so smooth, they were some of the quickest bouts we've ever filmed. He simply cut down I'm Milka and I Lost My Password, as well as Fedora Moai, in record time. And in front of a captive audience, dressed all in red. Their luck would not hold out though, as the pirates took their revenge on the seas. The Termingan tussle? would be a fierce battle between the incredibly aggressive Pickle Pirates who would face off against Nova, despite their tactical superiority constantly taking the weather gauge from all of their opponents, Nova could not stand up against the raw firepower brought to bear by the Pickle Pirates themselves, whose helmsman, none other than Picklewig himself, would later use this defining moment for him to challenge the Pirate King for the crown, a challenge which he would go on later to win. Going into Day 3 started off with the 4v4 Urban Combat matchup. Here, Pirates and Whitecrest would both pull out two wins, but Nova would once again wipe out their opponents in the land arena, winning four games to win it all. More impressive, it wasn't just brute skill, but strategy that would put them on top. Their strategy of breaking into two-man fire teams, flanking the center area, overcoming their main challenger Whitecrest, who used a scout and bait strategy. That means that Nova has won three of the four available gold medals in the land arena this year. In Mercury Mayhem, a 2v2 matchup of Mercury class ironclads, Nova would continue their momentum. These ships, the newest in the arsenal of available ironclads, would prove to be extremely susceptible to Nova's disabling tactics. Nova would use the circular arena to outmaneuver their opponent, forcing them to move out of line, overwhelm their gunners by disabling a broadside and at least one stern or bow gun, making it so the opposing ships cannot respond, then made easy work of them as they chased them across the water. So in the end, Nova steals gold in Mercury Mayhem, a category otherwise thought to be earmarked for Blackwind. The final challenge of Day 3 would be the Ur competition. The final matchup came down to a winner-takes-all fight between Pirates Crash CP and Waldo Lover 64, with the final moments of the game being branded as incredible luck in Waldo's favor, who would go on to take gold in this game of wit. Then comes Day 4, which sees our last two matchups, starting with the Tetra Race. It seems throughout all of these Berkman games, Whitecrest either dominated their opponents to the point where it wasn't even a competition or they flaked out entirely. The race saw a record-breaking run by both of the participating Whitecrest teams, closing at 8 minutes and 26 seconds, only 180 milliseconds apart between them, with no challengers even coming close. The Black Tars gaining Whitecrest's second goal of these games. 
And finally, the one to end this year's tournament, the Caro Sparrow Brawl. After a clumsy start by Whitecrest and Nova, it seemed that the Pirates were going to knock Nova Belruska from this year's pedestal as the best performing faction. But then, the impossible happens. During the White Crest Blackwind matchup, one player named Wood, in what at first appeared to be a suicide run after a lag-related malfunction on his ship, he earns the honor of being called Wood the Bullet Dodger. In White Crest's most desperate hour, they fled from a Blackwind battering. Wood moved in to take on the entire Blackwind fleet single-handedly and dodged all the shots that were made against him, and Whitecrest turns around, flanks, disarms, and crushes the Black Flags. After this battle, Whitecrest would not lose another ship for the rest of the tournament, shutting out all of their opponents with no losses taken, even managing to get an assassination of Jarity in the last shot fired. That means Day 4 was a Whitecrest shutout as they take gold once more. And with that, Nova Belruska ends the Birkeland Royal Games with four gold medals. Whitecrest and Blackwind would each have three gold, and Whitecrest would win in overall medals one with a total of 11. Nova's impressive performance in these games are a testament to their skill, especially in land combat, something the other factions, who are undoubtedly watching, will want to take into consideration if ever they choose to cross them in the future. But until those of less peaceful intent choose to embroil this region in war once more, we instead will end our broadcast here for today and wish all of you happy trading across those very calm seas.